SCP Foundation, Site 18, The Dead of Night. A lonely Foundation scientist makes his way to his office to leave for the day. Little does he know that tonight he will cross paths with what was a most deadly SCP, able to teleport from dark corner to dark corner like a deadly whisper. <laughs> All that was left in her wake was blood. Hello, I am Dr. Buck, and today we will be reviewing SCP-835-JP, otherwise known as Keteru Yamiko. Initially identified as a Keter, SCP-835-JP is now classified as, well, we'll get into that later in this presentation. Hey everyone, this week's SCP animated video is sponsored by AFK Arena. I always wanted to build a beautiful team of heroes that I could take on adventures with me, but I never found a game that could make that possible until I discovered AFK Arena. This game is seriously awesome. You can build up a personalized team and level up heroes from seven unique factions. Using hero unions, factional advantages, smart lineups, and unit combinations, you can implement endless strategies while creating your own adventures. And with idle game mechanics, it's perfect for gamers who want to explore a rich and beautiful fantasy world without grinding. You can even earn rewards offline. Let's take a closer look. First off, you can build your team from over 100 unique characters, all for free. And that artwork is just amazing. Even better, the unique faction mechanics really let you customize your fighting style. Check out my dream team. I loved the fact that you can customize your battle line to maximize your damage and buff your heroes. And I can't wait to keep playing to level up my heroes and unlock more characters to add to my party. There's never been a better time for new players to dive in. When you download and play AFK Arena during its anniversary between April 6th and May 5th, you'll receive 100 hero summons plus a special gift code. So don't wait. Click the link below to support our channel by downloading AFK Arena today. Build your dream team with 100 free summons and embark on the adventure of a lifetime. Due to its nature, containment of SCP-835-JP is currently impossible. In the event of a suspicious death of a Foundation employee allegedly involved with this object, Mobile Task Force Q3 Bonfire is to cordon off the crime scene and investigate. It is recommended that the deaths be disguised as unrelated incidents whenever possible, with consideration for the morale impact on surrounding personnel. SCP-835-JP is often described as a teenaged girl named Keteru Yamiko that possesses long black hair and wears black school uniforms. On some occasions, the description of her age and appearance may increase or decrease by about 10 years. Keteru Yamiko is almost universally characterized as attractive. Her emotional state is often portrayed as melancholic due to her taciturnity. She avoids being seen at all costs, hiding in the shadows. Keteru Yamiko can teleport from one dark area to another, regardless of distance or obstructions. She utilizes this ability to approach, attack, and kill targets quickly with a large kitchen knife in her possession. She is also said to have the ability to control darkness at will, engulfing objects and making them disappear, although the principle behind this is unknown. Due to her abilities, she was kidnapped and raised as an assassin by a group of interests that is hostile to the Foundation, and it is believed that this is how her current personality was formed. SCP-835-JP was originally a phenomenon that occurred only to the Foundation personnel, first identified in 1995. The phenomenon occurs in a cycle of about one to three months. The subjects who encounter it disappear in a matter of seconds, usually with a large amount of blood left behind. No subject, dead or alive, has ever been rediscovered. Investigations have confirmed the subjects were fatally injured prior to their disappearance. There are no significant common features of SCP-835-JP in terms of subject, time, or location, except that the victim is invariably a Foundation employee, and the scene is in a dark place with poor visibility. Occurrence has been confirmed in alleys at night, dimly lit stairwells, 
photo labs, shadows under desks, etc. Due to its unpredictability, suddenness, and the fact that the victims disappear without exception, no experimental observations of this phenomenon have been successful, and the details remain unknown to date. Based on the limited information obtained from the testimonies of witnesses who were present at the scene, as well as surveillance video footage, it is also known that the victims acted as if they were being attacked by some imperceptible entity. However, the existence of the attacker has never been corroborated. Several years later, a booklet with a hand-drawn anime-style girl titled Artist's Impression of SCP-835-JP was found on the desk of research assistant Edwards. After reviewing the contents of the booklet on the spot, it was discovered that the character in question had been given the name Keteru Yamiko, along with a set of attributes such as personality, origins, and abilities. The booklet was submitted to head researcher Ken on the same day. This led to the following conversation. What made you create Kiteru Yamiko in association with SCP-835-JP? Boredom, I guess. I don't have much to do except wait for the machines to process the data. Lots of downtime here. How very diligent. But you didn't answer my question. Listen, I know it sounds stupid, but waiting for data to come in on some murder monster... I don't... I don't know. Sometimes it just helps to think of these things as a bit more normal, you know? And normal to you is an anime schoolgirl with a knife? Compared to most of the things here in the Foundation? Yeah, I'd say so. Is this character, Keteru Yamiko, based on a previously established intellectual property? Perhaps an anime series or a manga? I mean, it's kind of taken from several. It's a bit of a cliche, right? Killer schoolgirl, black hair, huge knife. And drawing this fictionalized version of SCP-835-JP helps you cope with its existence? It's something I can imagine, at least. Otherwise, it could be... anything. Better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Interesting. I see here that you even wrote a backstory for it. You do know this could potentially cause a memetic hazard. Our research into SCP-835-JP has been spotty at best. I was just goofing around. I don't really see what the big deal is. Several SCPs are affected or even manifested by our collective perception of them. In these cases, fiction and reality are constantly intertwined. If word of this Keteru Yamiko gets out, who knows what could happen? I didn't realize. I'm sorry. Since Incident 835, the phenomenon continued to stay inactive, defying its previous one to three month attack pattern. Due to this prolonged inactivity, it was speculated that the anomaly was influenced by the perceptions of the Foundation personnel. Dr. Sanders recommended and received approval to implement Protocol Idol 835 with the goal of embedding a shared perception of SCP-835-JP in the Foundation personnel. The Foundation opted to continue using research assistant Edwards' character, Keteru Yamiko, as basis for Protocol Idol 835, which was already acknowledged by a significant number of personnel and proven to be at least somewhat effective at warding after SCP-835-JP. The importance of smooth and immediate transmission of information was pivotal. Its components were as follows. Firstly, all documents and information referring to SCP-835-JP were revised to make it easier for the viewers to associate them with Keteru Yamiko by including a detailed setting and replacing the object's designation number with a unique name. In addition, as part of a publicity campaign for staff, a large number of public relations magazines, supplies, common items printed with the character visual of Keteru Yamiko, which was designed by the Foundation illustrators, were widely disseminated at the facilities. Fictional novels, manga, animations with Keteru Yamiko as the main character were produced in sequence, and their viewing was recommended. Through these efforts, the Foundation has succeeded in making all personnel share the recognition of SCP-835-JP Keteru Yamiko in a matter of months, and no activation of the object has been reported since. 
Although these publicity campaigns are currently being scaled down, items featuring Geteru Yamiko remain in various facilities in order to maintain a certain level of recognition, and the Foundation regularly organizes creative sessions based on the theme of Geteru Yamiko. The last known sighting of SCP-835 occurred at Site-18, a small outpost in the Pacific Ocean. In accordance with set standard operating procedures, Foundation personnel were sent out to manage the Site-18's reaction to the death. <clears throat> uh, can you describe your experience with Keteru Yamiko? Well, I've been briefed on 835, er, Keteru before. I know of the comics or whatever, but I never paid them much mind. Those sessions are extremely important. Only by actively participating in them are we to eradicate this menace. I know, but I never thought she would show up here of all places. Neither did Dr. Nelson, to be honest. Let's start at the beginning. Now, according to our data, Dr. Nelson entered the security hallway at 2135 to leave for the night. Is this correct? Yeah, that's correct. I watch every person come and leave. We waved at each other, like we always do. Or did. Then what happened? The lights started to flicker. The wiring in Site-18 has always been spotty. We joked that instead of fixing it, they just classified an SCP. Please try to stick to the events leading up to the attack. Right. Sorry, Doctor. Anyway, he walked out of my view. I watched him on my monitor as he was about to exit. Then he saw something in the shadows and stopped. What was it? It was hard to tell, but he was staring right at it. It was like something was bubbling in the shadows. Then suddenly, I saw her. Keteru Yamiko. Yeah, it was like an optical illusion. She just popped into focus. But she wasn't like what she was in the manga. She looked... tired. What do you mean? Did she look old? No, not old. She looked like she was on autopilot. Anybody who has read the manga always said she was this big goofball. Well, really, she's only like that in the training videos. In the manga, she's got a reason to be so goofy. See, she has a... <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not important. Um, what happened after she appeared? The camera feed cut out. When it came back, Dr. Nelson was gone. Keteru Yamako was alone, standing in whatever was left of him. It was creepy. She just faded away after that. Now, this Dr. Nelson, I assume he was briefed on Keteru Yamako? Um, surely he had participated in some of her related events. He was a level three after all. Yeah, he was the guy that organized them. He was a big fan of the whole thing, he even had a special pop of her made for his desk. Said it was for training purposes. Hmm, that should be in his personal effects. Why do you think she came after him? How would I know? Aren't you supposed to be the expert? Well, you knew, Dr. Nelson. Why would she single him out? I don't know. Maybe she was visiting her biggest fan or something. Hmm... Is there anything else you would like to add? I don't think you'll be seeing her again. There was something about the way she looked that makes me think she's done with being what we've made her into. Hmm. Noted. But the videotape we've recovered has no appearance of her. Typical. I know what I saw, though. And I believe you. We must always stay vigilant for Keteru Yamiko. SCP-835-JP is probably a manifestation of the instinctive fear that something threatening oneself may be lurking in the darkness. But the imaginary monster we once feared has now been reduced to a cliched character with Protocol Idol 835. SCP-835-JP Keteru Yamiko has been neutralized by Protocol Idol 835. The possibility of strengthening containment by expanding the scope of the protocol outside the Foundation is currently being studied in order to prepare for potential containment breaches that could result from a major cognito hazard or similar incidents within the Foundation. While Kiteru Yamiko is designated safe, we are still unsure about how she manifested in the first place. Further research into the phenomena of SCP-835-JP has stalled, as no new data has presented itself. Armed with the knowledge from this presentation, we hope that you will continue to think of SCP-835-JP as just Keteru Yamiko.